discover a baby raccoon coming out of a clump of lady fern. The sweet fern is not really a fern at all, but a single species by itself. Its leaves give off a fragrant aroma when stroked. Its edible seeds are housed in a burr. When moving about on the dry upland, watch out for wasps and hornets. Their sting can be very painful at best. The paper wasp constructs its nest layer by layer, like leaves on a cabbage held upside down. Avoiding the paper wasp's nest, we move over the open ground, pausing at a cluster of bluets, or Quaker ladies, which may range in shade from a definite blue to white. Another low plant is the cinquefoil. Its name comes from the French, meaning five-fingered, because the leaves are divided into five segments. Nearby, in the dry, hard ground, may be seen an opening to the burrow of the chipmunk, also called the ground squirrel. He is our only squirrel to live in the ground and is the smallest of all our squirrels. Here he is stuffing his cheeks with seeds. Do you suppose he can still get down that hole? Now for our most showy native shrubs, or small trees. In the spring we find the blossoms of the cherries, the wild cherries come in many species. The choke cherry is tart, but very showy. Its tartness puckers one's mouth. It requires a great amount of sugar to make its jelly palatable. Our mountain laurel is a showy member of the rhododendron family. Its leaves are evergreen, where its relatives, the azaleas, shed their leaves. Look for mountain laurel in June on moist hillsides. A low-growing showy shrub is the wild rose, prevalent throughout the upland. The bunchberry is a diminutive dogwood. Its blossoms are similar to those of the tall understory tree. However, the bunchberry comes up fresh each year from the forest floor and forms a low carpet under evergreen trees. In spring, Londonderry's forest floor is actually alive with a variety of delicate bloom. The star flower is often found at the base of a large tree, its blossom lifted on a delicate stem. Violets of many kinds dot the ground on both the forest floor and in the open areas. Sharing the forest with the star flower are bird on the wing. Their petals are distinctive. Another name is baby toes. Canadian mayflower grow nearby, a cloud of white and green. Another common name is wild lily of the valley. Rising slightly above these is the moccasin flower, or lady slipper. Its bloom is generally pink, but sometimes white. A clump starts with a single bloom and increases yearly to an eventual eight or ten. The forest floor is often shaded by a canopy of tall trees, which make up the American mixed forest. Of the deciduous trees, the oak is often more prominent. Of the evergreen trees, the white pine is most prevalent. In a forest, the trunk of the pine soars upward for many feet before being topped by green branches. These few green branches transfer the benefit of sunlight down to the rest of the tree. Once every seven years or so, an abundance of cones grow on the pine tops. These seeds held by the cones are the favorite food for red squirrels. With his red tail arched over his back, the squirrel is perfectly at home in the branches, feeding on seeds to his heart's content. If the seeds from the pine cones drop to the ground, 
are uh, hidden there by the squirrels. They may produce seedlings to rejuvenate the pines of the forest. Occasionally, we find an aged, decaying pine, which grew in the open before the rest of the forest matured. Telltale to this fact are the many knots from large branches which remained green close to the ground while the tree grew. A decaying big pine may have holes made by woodpeckers for their home or as they looked for insects to eat. Perhaps we will see a nuthatch head down drilling for insects. Other native evergreen trees common in Londonderry are the pitch pine, spruce, hemlock, and the cedars. The pitch pine has an irregular limb structure. Its cones grow in clusters. The spruce tree's branches are arranged symmetrically around the trunk. The needles grow all around each twig and around the straight top leader. A very graceful evergreen tree is the hemlock. Its branches bend easily under pressure. Its leader sways in the slightest breeze and arches under the weight of snow and ice. The needles on a hemlock tree grow only horizontally on its twigs, giving a flat appearance. The cedar, like the hemlock, has a supple leader and branch ends. However, its larger branches stand stiffly erect in an arc, appearing to caress the contour of the tree. Cedars are one of the few trees which come in two genders. The growth of the female cedar is more compact, and it alone bears its many seeds. While in the forest, an exciting discovery is the platform nest of a large bird high in the treetops. It may be that of a hawk, such as this handsome red tail with mottled plumage extending well down onto its legs. It is a rare treat indeed to see one at rest upon the ground or close to up in the trees. We generally see hawks near their nesting forest, in the distance soaring on powerful wings as they ride the air currents over the open countryside. In contrast to Londonderry's tall evergreen trees are its deciduous trees, those which shed their foliage every autumn. A large variety of these trees may be discovered as we consider the mixed forest of Londonderry. The oaks are just one of a variety of nut trees native to Londonderry. There are many species of oak. Most common are the white, red, and pin oak. Oaks produce an abundance of acorns, which are their nuts. The native chestnut tree, when mature, has a wide spreading growth with dense foliage. From its long leaves with toothed edges hang sharp prickly burrs which contain its nuts. The richest nuts native to Londonderry are the butternuts or oil nuts. Housed in very hard shells, they grow in clusters at the base of leafy twigs on relatively small trees. The butternut tree belongs to the walnut family. Perhaps the most common walnut tree found in Londonderry is the hickory. A densely foliated tree, its nuts grow prolifically at the end of its branches. In autumn, the hickory nuts fall, their green husks dry to a dull brown and separate, leaving a smooth, hard shell underneath, surrounding the nut meats, housed in four chambers less than an inch long. The shagbark walnut tree's foliage looks similar to that of the hickory. Its distinguishing feature is its bark, which flakes in large scales along its trunk. The most abundant nut in Londonderry is the hazelnut, 
are the American filberts.